out of the nearby window in quiet reflection. She only had half an hour to collect her thoughts before meeting with Gary Loveman, president and CEO of Harris Corporation. In a brief but effective history of working together, one was crucial in getting employees excited about Loveman's customer service goals and incentive pay plan, but it was already losing its steam. In the previous quarter, customer service metrics had increased, but not to levels that merited a payout. It was only a matter of time before employees would tire of working hard without being rewarded. This was a taxing situation, but one Wynn signed up for. She was running Harris operations in the sleepy city of Shreveport when the call came in March of 99, offering a big office with a view of Death Valley. Coming from the field, Wynn had high hopes early on to be more than just a cog in a bureaucratic machine that is HQ. And she was. Loveman had Wynn get to work on improving company turnover right away. The initial goal was set at 15% improvement. They overachieved, bringing down the previous year's average of 45% to 34%. How did you do it? Loveman shifted the focus away from the individual interviews and introduced standardized testing. Meanwhile, Wynn focused on the pre-90 day turnover by creating a set sequence of interactions employees would experience. Next was customer service. In a heavily regulated industry, Giving collectives, team-focused bonuses, and incentives was a new and necessary concept. Loveman also introduced a gain-sharing program where employees were rewarded for improving customer service, irrespective of financial performance. By mid-2001, Harris has paid out more than $16 million in bonuses to non-management employees. But as much as they had improved, the profit numbers were not where they should be. The economy was dragging, and air travel might never recover from 9-11. Still, customer service was more important than ever, so it was urgent to keep employee morality high. Was the bonus payout program effective enough? Wen got up to leave the cafe. So during our presentation, we would like you guys to identify the main problem of the case. Um, also, do you guys agree with our solution? If not, what would you, would you do differently? What are the main points of our presentation? And do you agree? We interrupt this program to give a quick word from our sponsor, Harris Entertainment. Conflict of interest? Maybe. But don't worry about that. Uh, hi, my name is Gary Loveman, Chief Operating Officer of Harris Entertainment. And over the next couple minutes, I will be providing you with a comprehensive overview of Harris history and marketing strategy. Ever since William Harris opened the first property in 1937, Harris has prided itself on superior customer service. And because of this mission statement, Harris launched the Total Gold Rewards Program in 1997. When we did this, we were the first gaming company to offer a system-wide gaming loyalty program. This means that points acquired at one property could be redeemed at any of our other locations. This innovation in customer service propelled us to high levels of success in all of our locations, as well as paved the way for our future database marketing system. This system would collect information about our patrons via the total gold card that they would swipe at various machines throughout the casino. Uh, the information that we gathered from these cards allowed us to begin marketing using customer worth as opposed to a observed level of play and opened the door to countless new opportunities to bring more revenue into our casinos. Observed level of play is an archaic measure of customers because it fails to identify the potential value in customers who spend money at a number of different establishments. For example, if someone set aside $100 to gamble with and spend $20 at five different casinos, then utilizing the observed level of play method would lead us to severely underestimate the value of that individual. This is just one of the many new techniques that our data collection has made possible. I'd like to thank you for listening in on this Harris presentation, and I encourage you to visit us soon. And now back to our regular scheduled program. Marilyn enters Loveman's office at Harris. The window blinds were closed slightly as usual, casting dramatic shadows from the sunlight seeping in. Loveman had a thing for 1940s noir movies. He sat at his desk and checked his watch. Marilyn was right on time. Wynn, before you give me the recommendation, I want the, I want the rundown on your trip to our competitors. I need industry numbers and observations. 
Well, since 1999, there's been an increase in the overall market for hotel casinos with well over 300 locations across the country now. And what do you think is driving this surge? I'm glad you asked. Key external drivers seem to be consumer spending, domestic trips, an uptick in consumer confidence, inbound trips from non-U.S. residents, and leisure time. Visitors do make up the bulk of the buyers, but I found that airlines and tour operators are also contributing to growth as well. On the other end of things, the industry has been relying on wholesalers in wine and spirits, furniture and restaurant equipment, as well as TV appliances and computer package software. Revenues are up from last year as a whole at over 42 billion with gambling and slot machines still making up the bulk of the industry. That's what we like to see. Our biggest competitor right now is and always has been MGM Resorts, taking up 12.9% of the market share. And despite the high barriers to entry, Wynn Resorts just opened up. But due to the high capital requirements and heavy regulations, it's likely they might crumble by the summer. Great job. Now let's shift our focus back to us. What separates us from the rest of the industry? Mostly the fact that our competitors still seem to be prioritizing building on-site attractions like glitzy volcanoes rather than focus on their consumer preferences. No one is better than us to customer service. Lovin receives a call from his computer. Seder, the CEO, enters their meeting. He has just heard about the potential issues of his company and wishes to join in. He, Loveman, and Marilyn begin to communicate about all their different concerns. All right, let's get down to the brass tacks. As great as we are at customer service, we have issues we still need to address. My main hesitations are regarding the total rewards program and the data we are collecting in order to utilize that system properly. We need to ensure our total rewards program remains fresh and that people do not tire of it. Additionally, I think we need to consider the privacy of our customers and ensure that our data is stored in an appropriate way that minimizes the risk to our consumers. What hesitations do you guys have? Well, while no one has picked up on it yet, what we do could be replicated, and then we still have no major amenities or attractions like the other resorts. Should they fall on our tracks, our competitive advantage could disappear. There's also been concerns and disagreement from managers with the standardization of the interview process. Many are concerned that the test is too restrictive and robust as they want to promote and reward deserving employees but are not allowed to do so because the test indicates their employee wouldn't fit that position. I agree that our oversight might be undeserving to our managers at times. I also feel like we need to address these issues with strict regulations. I acknowledge all of these long-term issues, but I admit that I'm a little overwhelmed about our most current issue right now. All of our Casino managers were worried about 9-11, which just happened five months ago. Our political and cultural climate have changed, and people are not going to casino as much, and the airline policy has completely been drafted again. So this is why I've decided that we should not divide these concerns into tasks and approach them individually. We should have one priority and formulate the solutions to other issues in favor of that priority. And Marilyn's already working on that. I agree with Loveman that our total rewards program requires the most attention. For instance, we can extend this program to address the issues of employee burnout, separate this program to protect our data, keep this program fresh and unique to us, and use these solutions to boost our business during post 9-11. But I'm flexible and I love to hear what Marilyn has been working on as well as I love some inputs from Loveman. Marilyn is glad that Cedar mentioned the wider issues that she has planned for. As an operations expert, she has considered her possible solutions and is ready to defend them. First and foremost, I think it's imperative that we modify our incentive pay plan to be casino-based as a whole and not per department within each casino. This will eliminate the growing hostility between employees at the same location and create a sense of camaraderie. I think that's definitely a step in the right direction. Creating a sense of community among our staff will create a more hospitable environment for everyone. What else are you thinking? This is a delicate time, and it's no secret we're going to be losing foot traffic in our casinos over the next few months. Therefore, we need to adjust our quota and expectations for our customer service grades to account for current levels. Moving forward, this should also be a standard for our long-term future to, to ensure that we don't ask for impossible standards out of our employees. But most importantly, we want, our we want our employees to feel valued. So let's start with a personal letter from Peter, reaching out to each and every one of them. 
they've expressed their feeling, their feeling burnt out and then an extra $200 isn't a stimulating enough incentive. We ask our employees to work late night shifts, weekends and holidays. Let's offer some extra vacation time. And to prevent further turnover, I thought we could offer college scholarship opportunities for our younger employees as they make up a good chunk of our employee base in the field and then match this with improved retirement packages for our older tenured staff. Still, we can't ignore our security issues either. So let's start sorting our data and aggregates across different locations, grouping customers so we have less data stored. And lastly, I think it would also be wise to patent our rewards program as it's perfectly tailored to our industry and customer base. You've given us a lot to think about, and Loveman has also given you great input. But let's convene in a week when you've reconsidered, when you've considered Loveman's advice and you changed your plan accordingly. A week has passed. Cedar intervenes in the debate and asks Marilyn to take Loveman's advice and revise her solutions if necessary. He tells her to send him and Loveman an email explaining her recommendations step by step. He encourages her that these meetings will improve her plans, as work like this is lucrative and requires adaptability. After rechecking the details of her plan, Marilyn has written the following summarized steps in her email. Dear Peter and Gary, after cons careful consideration and, and revision, I recommend that we first send out an uplifting letter slash email to our, to our loyal customers and detail our exciting new discounts as we invite them back including gambling credits starting at $200 and increasing per tier. Second, announce our marketing plan of discounts for first responders in the 9-11 attack, as well as 30% of the of proceeds from hotels going to a variety of charities. Third, Peter should send out a personal letter to employees announcing the adjustments, including our incentives. He should also take a trip to different casinos over the year. Fourth, we need to reach out to managers to discuss issues with standardizing the interview process versus trusting their intuition. And lastly, we need to outsource our data to different places to enhance security. Loveman Carol calls Marilyn on the phone to let her know that Seder is satisfied and has begun to implement her steps. Now he will work with her to devise an implementation plan due next month with measures of success. He speaks privately with Seder about the risks of this implementation. Seder is thinking of new visions for the company as a backup plan. I like the plan. The only potential problems I see with it are as follows. Firstly, I hope our customers don't misinterpret our outreach program as disrespectful or as an attempt to capitalize on the recent tragedy. Secondly, hopefully if we decide to upskill our workers, it demonstrates our commitment to them and they don't take these new skills and degrees and leave our company for another one. But I do think that undertaking these initiatives will be a worthwhile investment in the long run. I do want to approach this as well, but I'm thinking that in case the effects of the total rewards don't go as expected, I've envisioned some other things as backup. For instance, I'm thinking about offering new changes, attraction, and mean meaningful decoration. We could invite celebrities like the popular Backstreet Boys to the location and establish ourselves as a concert destination. We want to be a part of daily American recreational life. Maybe in the future, we can change property functions in less known hotel locations to make it more relatable and visionary. We only keep our key locations to control image, but I'm thinking of diversifying income sources from casino model to other entertainment models as backup plan. We can maybe try pop-up casino as a response to long-term damage by 9-11. So with pop-ups, we can bring the casinos to the location of the customers who are afraid of flying and offer charity there. And with enough investment, we can probably dabble in niche properties under different names, like what Estee Lauder is doing. And speaking of data management, our team can acquire a tech startup to, make a, to create a virtual secure poker room or a hybrid poker situation in case of the next pandemic. In the end, we have to realize the importance of one-on-one -on -one learning relationships by taking the time to consider the individual needs of those affected. We suggested that the CEO reach out to both customers and employees individually to su provide support after the devastating events on 9-11. Managers and employees are encouraged to learn from each other about their respective needs. Managers should also discuss issues with the individual employees, communicating with them directly. Our CEO will offer niche offerings based on the individual customer's rewards here. Implementing one-on-one -on -one learning relationships is the easiest in service sectors, 
and also best for customer retention. Equally important was forming strong relationships with Hera's employees. A company's relationship development process does not apply to customers only, but should also include employees as they are an essential part of any service business. We realized that employees want to be promoted internally instead of giving those opportunities to outside managers, but that doing so based on only gut feeling was not feasible. We searched for a solution and found that implementing standardized testing to confirm qualifications was the best option. If employees do well, they will be promoted internally. Coupled with our gain sharing program, this will lead to great teamwork and high level customer service. In return, our team will have the opportunity to interview with both HR and direct managers and receive regular feedback and communication with HR that extends past the onboarding period. In conclusion, the main learning point is that not only got good customer service is important, but also a company's customer relationship management strategy. Only by taking both factors in consideration, a company can attain the highest retention rates, which in turn translates to high profits. Thank you guys so much for listening to our presentation. And now we'd love to hear some feedback from you guys and also Professor Wang, and also um, what you guys thought of the questions that we asked in the beginning. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, job. I, I truly enjoyed your, your role play. I, I think it's uh, creating a virtual boardroom meeting is, is kind of interesting initiative. Thank you so much. Yeah, you can stop sharing now. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from our, our class. So how do you think? Do you think, any, are you sure you, you analyzed the right case? Harass, right? Yeah. Yes, harass entertainment, right? Yeah, harass entertainment. And we're going, we were in 2002. You were passing forward, right? You are not talking about in 1990, uh, the 2000, May, May 4th, 2000. Yeah, we were in May 4th, 2000, and we're speaking about what's happening afterward, like after the total rewards program. After 9-11. Yeah, after 9-11. Okay, okay yeah. gotcha. So you basically focus on the, the, the time, the time um, horizon is a little bit forward thinking. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I really love the interactive uh, presentation style and uh, all the PowerPoint slides and then the, the whole like storytelling style, love it. Okay, however, however, I do want to point out uh, one thing is we need to stay focused on the questions uh, when you present for the rest of the class because you guys did a great job for sure. Um, I'm not picking on you, but it was the group. So we use that to illustrate, you guys did a very engaging presentation and you guys even change your background to be very real. That was actual, actual, um, you know, details. I, I love that because we found out in the past, our MSBA students tend to be, uh, when they present, they don't know how to tell a story. Now you guys overdo. Uh, you, you focus too much on story. Uh, and I hope, I hope you guys actually, for the rest of the semester, the cases should be going a little bit deeper to the data to show the numbers. A little bit more okay so if you have the numbers do crunch the number and then come back to tell the story you guys talking about the more strategic decision on uh, internal um uh, human human like human resource decisions and then you talk about uh, your customer strategy all those are wonderful thoughts i am um, you know but i hope uh, just to to let the whole class know um in the future for your uh case we we still focus more on the quantity, uh, the quantitative side, the number side to look to derive some kind of insights. You guys did did a little bit, but um, but it could be more. Okay, so because first time we don't know, right? So, but you guys, it's very good storytelling. I just I just truly enjoy it. At the beginning, I feel like oh, that's so real. <laughs> okay, let let me hear from the rest of the class comments. Any any comments? Be you know. Be constructive and, and, and be critical. We, we're here together to you learn. Know. Any, any feedback for them? Professor, I actually have a question about the questions for the case. Sure. Um, in the bright space, they didn't seem like they really matched up with the case in Harvard Business Review. It seemed like they matched up more with like the short Loveman article that we read for last week's class. Or oh, maybe let me let me double check on the case. Maybe I give you guys the different case. Uh, I was I was um, it's called harass entertainment, right? 
Yeah, that's what it's called. But um, your questions online, it matches with the article. So that's the why we work so Yeah. So do you guys, okay, so let me show you, let me show you what I have. I have a whole bunch of data table and stuff. You guys don't have that? So let me show you. Do you, you have this, this page? Oops, this one? Like a lot of data. The case I have doesn't have any like You have 100 stuff. customer data. Oh, what a bummer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> must be, must be, I give you the, the case is different from what I'm teaching now. Okay. So that's why I get so lost. I said, wait a minute, what are they doing? <laughs> okay. So, so you guys actually, it's the newer case that goes after they finish the whole CIM system. Yeah, and, and we also answered those questions on Brightspace too, if you need that. Yeah, yeah, you did, I think, yeah. So I'm so sorry, let me, uh, let me, let me double check on whether the case is, is the correct one. I hope it was, but, it, but how many pages do you have for the case? 16. Oh, it's a shorter version. I must have the case was about it. motivating how to keep employees motivated that work at Harrods. It was very okay, HR but, okay. focused. So if we stay, stay focused on that, you guys did a perfect job. I thought, so I actually have a 27 page case. 20 page, uh, 27 pages. Uh, okay, so we are talking about different things. Okay, anyway, so so apologize. I, I sincerely hope apologize. <laughs> so so do, you, um, do you realize I'm going to send you um, the PDF file of the case, so you guys take a look at what I actually have in mind. And there must be, must be when I, when I put them into the course pack, they, they updated the new one. And then I did not have the older one. So that, that's, that's what happened maybe. So I'll, I'll check into that. I apologize. Okay. But I will double check on all your cases, not getting into the wrong case. Okay. But, but maybe your case, you guys did that, handled that very well. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So, so the, the learning point, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the learning, learning point that I plan to do, okay? 